Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, reminding you to get your ClassicsToday.com swag at the ClassicsToday.com merchandise shop, which is on the upper right hand of the ClassicsToday.com homepage. You're going to definitely want to see that and spend a fortune, absolutely. Anyway, this is one of my road music talks. Music to play when you're on the road, driving through the wide open spaces, or in my case, the I-95 corridor from New York to Connecticut. Um, on the weekend, this was a real major discovery. I had it downloaded on my iPod. And so, you know, I plug it into my car and I can listen to it in the car speakers. It was British Music for Strings, Volume 2 on CPO with Douglas Bostock and the Süddeutsches Kammer Orchestra Pforzheim. Yes, and they play very, very well. I mean, they really do. And this is a wonderful series of genuine rarities, absolute genuine rarities. And I was very excited by this one because it contains three works. Two are by some guy named Christopher Wilson, who lived from 1874 to 1919. And it's his Suite for String Orchestra, which is absolutely, totally, it's from 1901, completely, utterly unoriginal and conventional in every way you can possibly imagine. It's charming. It has nice tunes. It's effectively written. And it has no musical distinction whatsoever. But it's enjoyable. And it was pleasant to listen to. It provided with a good 24 minutes, which is like how long it takes to kind of get out of the city and get moving towards the Whitestone Bridge, you know, if, if there isn't too much traffic. See, the wonderful thing about this disc is that it lasts 76 minutes and 47 seconds, which is almost exactly how long it takes me to get to my mom's house in Connecticut and the overflow room um, with, if there's no traffic. Now, that's a very big if, but since I usually leave early in the morning before, you know, all hell breaks loose, it, it, it usually works out, and it did this time because I hit the exit. I hit the Milford, Connecticut exit <laughs> at exactly the end of this, this disc, and I'm only five minutes from the exit. So, I mean, you know, I don't want it to stop and get gas and whatnot. So it was perfect, the perfect hour and 15, 16 minutes of road music. I mean, it just couldn't have been better. I was thrilled. So I love it. I love it. And then I, I sat down and played the whole thing separately because in the car, you don't hear the, you know, the softer parts so easily and whatnot. And there's some really good music here. Not so much by Christopher Wilson, who's not bad, as I said, but the rest of the disc. Ah, the rest of the disc. It is fresh from the planet Bantakia. It features the works of Bantok. Yes, from Bantokia, the prison planet of the planet Baxia. Now, I once rather contemptuously said, and maybe I regret this a little bit, that, that Bantok is basically Bax without the brains. I like the alliteration. Bantok is Bax without brains. Yeah, it has rhythm, doesn't it? And, well, yeah, maybe I should stand by that. That's kind of true. But here's the point. I didn't know these works at all. I did not. And I mean, as far as I know, these are premieres of some kind. It doesn't say so on the disc here, but I mean, who, who else knows them from where? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. But really, they're, they're, they're quite rare and unusual, and they are. The Serenade for String Orchestra, subtitled in the far west, far, far west, and Scenes from the Scottish Highlands, a suite for strings. Now, the Serenade is quite a remarkable work. It's an amazingly remarkable work. First of all, it's much more than a serenade. It's in four movements. It's 32 minutes long. It is a symphony. And it's mostly in minor keys. It's not your usually relaxed, gemütlich sort of serenade. It's a really beefy, meaty, intensely argued. I mean, it even has like a big fugue in the first movement. It's a wonderful, wonderful work. I was absolutely shocked because usually I'm not too impressed with things that get exported from Bantakia. And the Bantakians are nuts. They just love everything. I mean, they don't have any sense of taste or, or, or proportion in these things. They like anything that comes from Bantakia. 
Well, I'm more choosy than that. And this is great stuff. I am not kidding. But what makes it even more unbelievably astounding, aside from that wonderful, tense, somewhat, you know, passionate and thrustful first movement, is the second movement. Oh, my God. I put on the second movement and I heard this. Yes, you do. your ears did not deceive you. That is Stephen Foster's Way Down Upon the Suwannee River, also known as Old Folks at Home. And all of a sudden it became clear. The far west that Bantock was referring to was not some village in Wales or some, you know, Celtic thing from somewhere that way. It was America. Yes, it's America. It's really unbelievable. But yes, he was quoting Stephen Foster songs in this piece, and only in the second and fourth movements, not the other two. Thank God. It's not done tackily. It isn't, it isn't vulgar. It isn't, you know. And one of the things you begin to realize is that, is that really Bantock had a real gift for string sonority. The writing for string orchestra is sonorous and beautiful and lyrical and voluptuous and just marvelous and clear and, and texturally interesting. It's really, really a great piece. I'm not kidding. And when I heard that song in the second movement, oh my goodness, I practically drove off the road. You would have found me in a ditch next to New Rochelle. I mean, you really would have, because I was that shocked. It was amazing. So then there's a scherzo after that, and then there's a finale. I'm going to play a bit of the finale. It's based on another Stephen Foster song. Do you know which one? He doesn't quote it directly, only bits, only little bits. It's not, it's not so obvious as the second movement where he just plays the tune. Listen to this. It's Yankee Doodle, because it goes dum bum bum bum, you know, dun 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 dun. And I don't even know if that's by Stephen Foster. I think it's much older than that, that tune. Wasn't it like an American Revolutionary tune? I don't know. I don't remember. But that's the tune. And it's from the Far West. Yes, the exotic land of the Far West. And I think it's fascinating that somebody came 
all the way from the planet Bantakia, which is not just far, it's, it's, it's light years away, and is fascinated by American tunes. I mean, really, what could be more interesting than that? It's totally, totally amazing. And the performance is wonderful. Now, the last thing on the disc is this Scenes from the Scottish Highlands. And these scenes from the Scottish Highlands, there's, there's five movements, I think, or something, yes, five. Um, and they are settings, as you might have guessed, of Scottish folk songs. And you will recognize them almost immediately because they sound very, very Scottish. But what really interests me is that they prove, beyond all shadow of a doubt, Constant Lambert's marvelous dictum that the problem with treating folk songs is that the only thing you can do with them is play them louder. It's absolutely true here. I mean, the tunes are marvelous. The minute Bantock gets his hands on them and starts manipulating them, they become less interesting. So each movement, which is, you know, has tons of repetition and sort of variation, the more he varies the tunes, the less interesting they become because what makes them interesting in the first place is their Scottish folkishness, you know? And the more you make them not sound like that, the less you want to hear them. So this was a true exercise in musical aesthetics. Of course, the music is charming. It has that similar feeling for orchestral or for string sonority. It's wonderfully played and wonderfully recorded, but it really proved Lambert right, at least in my opinion. Nonetheless, this was a fabulous disc to get me the hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes in this particular case. It took me to get home on Saturday and I recommend it to you accordingly. And you are going to want to hear this serenade. This is one hot piece of music. It's first class in every respect. And just wonderful that for what used to be, you know, coming from what used to be a prison planet, um, they achieved so much so soon after their independence from Baxia. I think it's just amazing. So for all of you Bantakians, I hope that this at least does some justice to your hero and to your the national treasure of a composer. And for everybody else, it's going to be a real discovery. I guarantee it. Once again, that's Douglas Bostock with the Süddeutsches Kammer Orchestra for time on CPO. Keep on listening, folks. Take care.